Our breaking news story tonight, former President Jacob Zuma has been placed on medical parole because of ill health. Well, that's according to a statement released by the Department of Correctional Services a short while ago. Uh, Mr. Zuma will complete the remainder of his sentence in the system of a community corrections, they say. So last month, uh, prison authorities said the former president underwent unspecified surgery and was in hospital with more operations planned. SABC News spoke uh, to the uh, spokesperson for the Jacob Zuma Foundation a bit earlier on, Mzwanele Manyi. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. This is a most welcome development. It's a sigh of relief. It just shows that uh, there is humaneness in the system, uh, but it also means that uh, the condition that President Zuma is uh, is in medically is uh, a lot more serious, actually, uh, than most of us would have made, up, made it out to be. But we really welcome this development, and the lawyers have been contacted, and they are studying the conditions and all of that. A much more well considered a statement will be issued in due course. But for now, these are good news that uh, we must all uh, welcome. Have you spoken uh, to the former president and what did he have to say? Uh, no, we haven't spoken to President Zuma yet. Uh, obviously, we're going to have to make all kinds of means now uh, to make the contact. But as things stand, no, we haven't spoken to him. Uh, but the lawyers have spoken. Uh, but I'm mean, but. He, I'm sure you, you would be very uh, delighted to, to hear that uh, this is going to be the situation. But indeed, he still continues in hospital now. Uh, we're not sure when he's going to leave the hospital to his house because he's still under that day observation. Now, in the statement, uh, Mr. Manye, allow me to just read a paragraph where it says medical parole placement for Mr. Zuma means that he will complete the remainder of the sentence in the system of community corrections. And I know that you have also mentioned those co co conditions whereby he must comply with specific set of conditions and will be subjected to supervision until his sentences expire. Do you have in, uh, any idea what some of those conditions are? Uh, this, is, this is what the lawyers are going to go through. Uh, I think you and I have got the same level of information as things stand. So deeper information about that uh, will be with the legal team. Uh, we'll uh, confer with the legal team sometime today, tomorrow, uh, and then uh, we'll be able to respond fully, uh, having uh, taken uh, guidance from the legal team. But we don't know the details as things stand. Now, the statement also says that uh, medical parole's eligibility for Mr. Zuma is impelled by a medical report received by the Department of Correctional Services. Is this the same medical report we're talking about um, following his examination, uh, you know, that was presented at the Peter Marisburg High Court uh, last month? This is a... This, this work is a product of a two teams of doctors. Mm -hmm. The doctors at the SA Military Hospital together with the doctors at Correctional Services. So all of those that were asking for a second opinion and what have you, we've got actually now a second opinion from another state organ uh, that uh, is uh, responsible for the uh, well-being and care uh, of prisoners, uh, as it were. So those doctors that are from Correctional Services, clearly they concur with the doctors at the uh, military, that's how they've come to this conclusion that the condition warrants the kind of decision that they've taken to put him on medical parole. All right, uh, let's uh, get more details on this now. Let's bring in uh, the spokesperson of uh, Correctional Services, Singabako Ngumalo. Mr. Ngumalo, very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the program. So first of all, when were these papers signed and from when is this medical parole effective? A very good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity. As a department, we have indeed confirmed that Mr. Jacob Zuma has been placed under the medical parole effectively from today and he has also been informed. And um, uh, there are um, uh, um, conditions uh, attached to it 
that that will have to uh, comply with. Uh, but for now, um, we must indicate that he remains in hospital up until such time that uh, uh, doctors discharge him. Then uh, he can be taken home where he will continue to receive uh, medical care. But uh, a decision had to be taken looking at the medical reports received that uh, he, uh, he had to be considered for medical parole. Uh, given that Mr. Zuma has not yet been released, you're saying that he's still in hospital. However, the paperwork is done. As soon as he's uh, ready to leave the hospital, he will then be discharged. What is Mr. Zuma's condition currently? Um, Mr. Zuma continues to receive um, medical care. And uh, for the medical um, uh, parole placement is effectively from today, meaning that he is now in our community correction system. So we no longer refer to him as a, someone like as a sentence offender uh, who ought to be in a correctional facility, even though in an outside hospital. But it's someone who is now placed uh, back into the community but again, remains in hospital up until such time that doctors um, yeah, discharge him, which therefore says that our community corrections there and a branch will then now have to then um, uh, start with their processes in terms of supervision and also looking at other means that they will have to develop uh, to monitor yeah. him uh, and, uh, until uh, such time that his sentence expires. Mr. Numalo, I'll come to those uh, issues very shortly, but um, do we have any indication at this stage when Mr. Zuma uh, will be discharged? Of course, you at Correctional Services will be the first to know uh, any indication from doctors at this stage when he will go home? That is a decision that can only be taken by the doctors, uh, the ones who are treating him. Uh, they, whenever they see fit that he, he now is fit enough that they can take him back home, where he will continue to receive medical care, it's a decision that they will take. If they feel that no, um, he must remain in hospital, he will stay in hospital. But then the reports that have been submitted to us were quite uh, vividly clear that he, has, he had to be considered for medical parole. So medical parole wise, because it, he is someone um, um, who does require medical attention. Hence then yeah. it's, it, it's different from normal parole to say if your, your papers are signed today, you know, you, li you leave the facility, you know, off you go home. No, it's different. You are, um, you require medical attention. Right. Therefore, up until such time that the doctors may say, you can now go home, then you can leave uh, um, um, the facility where you are. And I'm sure, Mr. Numalo, uh, it will come as no surprise, but uh, there would be some criticism uh, on the uh, release on medical parole of Mr. Zuma from certain quarters. I have to ask, on the basis of that, uh, talk us through what criteria was used to grant Mr. Zuma medical parole. You spoke about uh, the medical report that was received, but in, in instances like this, uh, what criteria is used to grant someone medical parole? You, you've got to look at Section 75.7a of the Correctional Services Act and, and uh, everything together with Section 79, which then uh, defines to say, a person has to be terminally ill and physically incapacitated or suffering from an illness that severely limits that person from conducting daily activities or someone who can you know take care of himself therefore that person has to be considered for um, for, for for medical parole but then it's a decision that cannot be you know taken by you know a layman by just looking at that person you ought to receive a report from medical specialists who will then indicate to say no indeed this person and must be considered uh, for parole placement on, on on medical grounds. That that's the procedure yes. that you have to follow, and then and then and and, and then take that and, and take that decision. But even after taking that decision, yeah. you still have to attach certain conditions. Why you have to attach conditions? The person is still serving a sentence. The only difference is that you are now uh, outside right. a correctional facility, and the person will be you know um, ob uh, obligated you know to abide by those uh, uh, conditions, but also to give this person in some form of dignity because this is someone who is ill to say maybe it's the last days or you know of, of this person to be in the comfort of of of, of his family yeah. members 
you know, up until such time that, you know, that sentence expires. And and then, but sure. it, what is key here is that it's not a decision that you just take willy-nilly. You ought to be guided by medical advice. All right. Mr. Numalo, what are those conditions uh, for Mr. Zuma's uh, medical parole? For example, will he be confined to Nkantla? Will he be allowed to travel? What are some of those conditions? Okay, unfortunately, we do not divulge uh, parole conditions to the public, but I have to explain that parole conditions, one, are there to um, assist the person who is out there want to uh, adjust into a normal uh, um, uh, setup into the community, but also um, to um, to supervise that person properly as correctional services, but also to manage the risk. Uh, why was you know um, uh, why is the act you know pushing that there must be parole conditions? Take for instance someone who's just been granted the normal parole. If let's say this person has gone back into the life of crime, you ought to have means then to um, to to check that and. and and then take that person back in case this person is now deviating from those particular uh, particular conditions. But when with some, when it's someone on medical parole mm. basis, you still need to have those conditions in case, let's say, this person has to be home to receive medical yeah. care, you know, and, uh, be treated by doctors. What if this person decides that, you know, now I no longer want to receive, you know, treatment. I no longer want to abide by the instruction, you know, of the treating doctors. Then a decision has to be yeah. taken. Because at the end of the day, this person was given a sentence. It has to be served, you know, up until it expires. All right. We know that Mr. Zuma is uh, attending court uh, for another matter. So when yeah. someone is granted uh, medical parole, uh, 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 what would be the instance? Uh, because obviously in this instance, uh, you're basically saying you're releasing him. Uh, he will serve the remainder of his uh, sentence uh, uh, doing community work. And uh, what does this then mean in terms of his fitness to stand trial for uh, another matter that is in court for? One, I can I have to correct this. He cannot do community work. He's out, you know, he's back in the community. Hence, we call it a, a system of community corrections. But someone who is ill cannot do any form of community work. All that we need to do is to um, um, make it a point that there is supervision and that he abides by the parole conditions. That we, had, uh, uh, that we need to do. We can't expect someone who's ill to uh, undertake mm. community work. Uh, yes, uh, that would be inhumane. Uh, but then, a decision that we take as correctional services is when someone has been presented to you to say, yes, someone who's been um, sent, uh, sentenced to this number of years for this particular offense, yeah. you deal with that person on the basis of what you have. Unfortunately, if they say the other matters happening outside our jurisdiction, we unfortunately we, we cannot comment on that. I think the relevant structures there may have to come in. But on our side, we are dealing with someone who was sentenced to 15 months for for a particular offense yeah and and the reports that you've received are clear in saying that this person needed to be considered for medical parole due to ill health and that's a decision that we've taken singabako Numalo, who is the spokesperson for the department of correctional services uh, on that uh, breaking news story uh, the former president uh, jacob zuma being placed on medical parole indicating that uh, the former president is still in hospital currently and uh, that uh, the doctors will indicate when he will then leave that facility and go home uh, after, of course, uh, the Department of Corrections received uh, that medical report, that breaking news in this hour. Lots of analysis on that coming up.